Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hey, aloha, and welcome to the Think Tech Hawaii studio. We're back for another episode of Security Matters, and we've got Chuck Andrews in the house with us today. Chuck, thanks for coming. Really appreciate you taking time out of your vacation to spend some time with us today. It was rough to come to Hawaii, Andrew. I know, it's someone tough. Someone had to do it. It's tough. <laughs> hey, um, so I always ask my security practitioners, um, what keeps you up at night these days? We've got a lot going on in security. Yeah, a lot going on in security, right? Look, this is a dynamic industry. It is evergreen. It's forever changing. And mm -hmm. just trying to keep up with the latest and the greatest security technology that's cost-effective, preventative, and actually works out there, right? There's so much information and data. So my mind never stops, which in turn <laughs> keeps me up at night. Wow. You're like yeah. me. I, I turn over those same things. Um, and you're going to be out here talking about some of that, I know, with our local As Is chapter, uh, As Is International chapter tomorrow. Absolutely. Uh, Looking forward to updating the uh, Hawaiian chapter of ASIS International here in Honolulu. Um, bringing them up to speed, of course, on the big GSX conference coming up mm -hmm. in Vegas here in a couple of weeks. Yeah, we have, um, I typically see a handful of folks from the islands that get to that show. Um, it, unfortunately, it's typically the same guys, so there's not a lot of funding for a lot of our security directors and our folks here. And part of this channel is, is to do a lot of that outreach and try to share. Yeah. I usually do like a best of the show, the things you missed, and yeah. try to bring back, you know, that, that type of information that uh, a lot of our folks out here just don't, don't get to avail themselves of. Absolutely. What do you think we'll see at GSX this year? Well, we're going to see uh, actually quite a lot. It's going to be quite different at GSX. First, let's start with the name, right? Yeah. Global Security Exchange. Yeah. Complete rebranding of this reinvented, this innovative new uh, conference, if you will. It's still the seminar and exhibits, right? Formerly ASIS International Seminar and Exhibits, now GSX branded that way. And the X is very important because right where all the exhibits are is going to be stage X. Okay. What does X mean? X equals learning. So we're talking about innovation from Bitcoin to AI to wearables across the board. It's wow. going to be really exciting. Cutting edge security. What is the latest and greatest out there? And the only way to do that is to show up and participate at GSX this year. Sure. So we're going to have a like a, a, a stage platform there with, and it'll be just Absolutely. like ongoing. People right scheduled. in the middle of everything going on wow. on the exhibit floor. It's going to be really exciting, and this is really what people are looking for, right? Mm -hmm. This opportunity. Of course, we have InfraGuard and ISSA as partners. Sure. So the cyber component, right, has to be part of that physical component. We talk about guns, gates, and guards, right? Yes, we do. You've got to have the cyber piece as part of that, the IS, the information security, the IT, and the forensics piece part of it, right? Because everything you touch now from your watch to your computer to your phone has a central processing unit. It can't be dismissed as part of the risk. Yeah, that's a, it's a thing. I spent uh, most of my show last year at InfraGuard, and I'm going to do it this year. Fortunately, Christine and I can kind of divide and conquer, so she sure. hits up the main education, and I hit up InfraGuard, and we compare notes, and we try to bring all that back to our team. I've got a yeah. couple other team members going as well that take some of our clients and take them around to some of the, the booths. It's, it's really one of the largest shows in North America. I mean, I, it's, yeah. it's popular. It's usually heavily attended. Well, look, ASIS International, the world's first oldest and largest security professional society. Been around since 1955. Wow. 1955, 63 years. Think about all the people and the learning, the processes, the knowledge, the competency, right? All culminating in the GSX event. You want to be there and be a part of that if you're in the security business. Yeah, and I think we get 20, 30,000. I don't even know. It's huge. It's, yeah, it's, around 20, uh, 25,000 people uh, at the conference that we have. Of course, we have a conference in the Middle East and in Asia, mm -hmm, sure. and then I just got back from attending the one in Europe. It wow. was very, uh, very successful. Yeah, it's interesting how, you know, security is this industry of global partnership, you know, and it, it, I like when I travel and you get around some international folks. They have a some of them quite a different slant on how to do things and what works, and it's really eye-opening. I was in with the um, uh, Zenitel group in um, Italy oh, um, yeah. uh, end of last year, and, mm -hmm. and it was a group focused on kind of the oil and gas segment and platforms and all the stuff that I don't really get to touch on. Totally different perspective on what we need to be doing, what type of innovation they were looking for compared to what we hear about here. So that international component is super relevant to our industry. It absolutely is. So that's why I experience it to go over there. That experience of going over there is just, it's, it's huge because old to us is 200 years. 
There's people who rent out apartments in Bavaria and Germany. It's 800 years old. <laughs> so it's all relative and to the thank you. Sure. Back in 1985, I had a great opportunity, uh, my undergrad career at Sam Houston State University, to go over to Europe and study huh. at the Max Planck Institute for Criminal Justice. So we went into the penal institutions, the courts, and patrol operations of multiple countries. Mm. I brought that perspective back, and you're absolutely right. That perspective is better because when you get over here, the way you respond to the risk, mm -hmm. right, and respond to whatever project that you're working off in that security vertical, you take a completely different attitude and angle on how to fix it, right? Work the problem. Mm -hmm. So there's a huge benefit to networking and learning overseas, bringing that knowledge back, you're dead on. Yeah, and, and I think there's a good training component there. I know you're a CPP, and there's a, Absolutely. isn't? Or do they give the exams or pre-exams? There's some of that stuff you can work on while you, if you go to the show as well. Absolutely, yeah. on the weekend before the show starts. That's what In this is. case, on the 23rd, you can go through different reviews for the CPP, Certified Protection Professional. Mm -hmm. Now, did you know there is a new certification out by the Professional Certification Board by ASIS International? Have you heard about it? The no. APP? No. The Associate Protection Professional. Ah. So Something brand new, just started in 2018. If you've got one to four years experience, it's kind of like that introduction certification huh. so you can begin your career. Show up at the conference, you can learn more about yeah, it. Yeah, so and we've got some of those on our staff that we're encouraging. Christine's encouraging the PSP, but they don't have yep. the, the years yet. So yep. that's a nice note. I did not know about that. Yep, lots of new things going on today. ASIS Great start. So, so what else? I know there's uh, Connect. Yeah, yeah, ASIS Connect. Talk, talk about that Absolutely. a little bit. Absolutely. So as a member, you get an opportunity to be in the community, right? The security professional community, right? 35,000 members. 7,600 are board certified, right? CPP, PSPs, mm -hmm. and PCIs. So when you log in and become, become a member, log in, you get to be part of the ASIS Connects community. What that means is that opportunity to network with people. You have to set up your profile to do that put your information in it. More importantly, set your privacy settings such that other people who are members can see and share your information. You wanna start a new topic about maybe mm. a project you're working on or uh, some knowledge that you need to gain in a particular area of security, you can actually start and create that and have thousands of people respond to it wow. to help you out. Research information, it's just a great community to be in. It's the premier community in security to be able to communicate with that information. That's got to be centuries of experience. Absolutely. In that, with that many, um, uh, I guess, professionals you know, from, from the ranks. Absolutely. Maybe you just want to, you just started out and you need a mentor. Mm -hmm. You could actually post, looking for mentor. Mm. Put that information out and it all could be shared with everybody. It is endless as to the amount of information that you can gain, but you gotta show up, be a member, log in, set up your profile, put your privacy settings, and of course, ASIS International Headquarters staff will help people do that and mm. get more information. Awesome, it's amazing. Like So it, sound, it seems like as is, is kind of modernizing itself, but after being around quite a while, these are um, yes, it is. fairly, uh, what would you call them? Digital, digitized sort of ideas, you know, the way things are getting done these days, that, that collaborative digital experience and sharing all of our knowledge is critical because when you have a problem and you're trying to help someone, you know, and you're maybe on your own or there's even if there's five people in the room, sure. if you can get 50 people in the room, you're probably going to get the best solution for the person with the problem. Very much so. And remember, you can reach out to those people individually, understanding mm -hmm. what their role is. Maybe they're the chief security officer of a particular company, mm -hmm. right? and that's the kind of company or vertical that you wanna work in, right? Could be maybe chemical operations, um, could be fraud, could be mm -hmm. investigation, could be physical security, your sure. world, right? Sure. On the technology side. You can find those people, reach out to them directly or as a group by posting that information in ASIS Connects. That's amazing. Well, what, what else has happened at ASIS? Now, you've been on, um, on the board for yes. several years. Uh, a couple years. How, how, did you, um, how did you, what was your path there? Give us a little bit of your, uh, you know. Sure. Well, actually, it goes back a, a long time. Uh, <laughs> I started as a law enforcement police explorer in 1976. Wow. What okay. is that? Boy Scouts of America. Actually has two verticals. Scouting, which we all know, Cub Scout, We Below, Boy Scout. There's this is a career awareness vertical starting the late 50s, 60s called Exploring. Well, one of the most successful and largest components of that division is law enforcement exploring. Hmm. So basically, Amazing. I donned a uniform, everything but a gun, and went out on patrol, and from the age of 13 to 19, logged 4,000 hours on patrol. Wow. 
and uh, became a commissioned officer at the age of 1920 in Texas. And that's how I began my career up to chief of police mm -hmm. and then went to the private industry. Wow. And then did, did you, you obviously had heard of as is earlier, did you, were you working on certifications uh, as a law enforcement or did, was it after when you were in private? So uniquely enough, I started at the Denver Mile High chapter back okay. in the uh, 80s, got my CPP certification. Back then it was, I think, 600 questions, six 100 Scantrons, if you will. <laughs> and uh, if you ever taken a Scantron test, it's oh. like with pencil, right? Sure. You can hear it in the machine if you passed or failed by the number of clicks, uh -huh. right? Wow. As part of it, flew to Dallas, got my CPP, and uh, have had it ever since as a law enforcement officer. Keep in mind, I was in crime prevention, and crime prevention and security are almost synonymous. Sure. So as a result, it just made sense. What's important to the business person in my community as a crime prevention officer? I'm in an interest in preventing crime. There's no better way to do that than the competencies, training, skill, and networking of ASIS International. So uniquely, I started as a law enforcement officer and then went to the private industry as a chief security officer and so on and so forth. Yeah. Hmm. And, yeah. and so that process for uh, uh, working for and with ASIS, because they have a lot of committees. You know, there, there's a lot of different focus areas within our industry that I think ASIS is active in. Um, yes. what, can the, what can the folks out there do to help that? Um, should they start with Connect, or what, what, do you, what do you advise them to do? So, first, join. Yes, join. Right? Got to be a member of ASIS yeah. International. Go to your local chapter meetings. That's exactly Share right. Share your information. ASISonline.org. Start there and make sure you got all the information that you need uh, to actually join and become a member and then start taking advantage of everything that you can by attending your local chapters. We have 241 chapters in 140 plus countries. Wow. So uh, There's bound to be one near you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, an ASIS chapter near you. Come That's join right. today. That's right. And so um, how many members do we have these days? About 35,000 uh, 35, wow. members. Globally. Um, 51 regional areas. We're Africa conference and or, uh, for regional areas, Africa, Middle East, Asia, Europe, and of course the United States, and that's where the biggest conference is. And are those st structured similarly? You have technology providers as well as education at, at all of those? Yeah, we have 300 plus educational sessions actually at GSX. Wow. So every topic under the sun will pretty much be covered. It, that would take another uh, two hour show just to cover the topic. Yeah, the, it is a thick, it is. Yeah, going online, GSX, go to asisonline.org. Mm -hmm. Get all the information and make a decision to attend. I think you will. And are the are the other international shows? Are they are they as like that? Several days of education, mm -hmm. kind of similar format. Or? Yeah. So yes, they they run a week uh, at, at a time for us. It's the 23rd to the 27th this year in Las okay. Vegas, the Las Vegas Convention Center. Sure. Um, exhibits uh, Tuesday through Thursday this year. Mm -hmm. We kick off on Sunday at the Brooklyn Bowl with opening night celebration. Now, there's a rumor that. Somebody may be on stage singing a song. I don't know. ASIS Foundation has got a little fundraiser going, so you want to be there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, last year I, we had some of our Hawaii contingent. We were on the bull ride, remember? Yes, raising, the bull ride. Right, and and my, my wife got an awful easy ride compared to me. That's all I'm going to say about that. We yeah, paid the same. Paid, well, we donated sure? the same. But you check your credit cards. Today? Yeah. Okay. And all so right. and I was, Just you know, she's like, it's not that hard. I'm like, really? I got dumped. Like, but anyway. And then all the Hawaii guys ran off. I was trying to issue a challenge right. to raise more funds. Yeah. And then I was like, where'd those guys go? But anyway, <laughs> not a lot of bull riders. It was in very successful, and we thank yeah. you for your contribution. Well, you were MC. That was great. Like we couldn't get you couldn't get past Chuck MC. Come on, get a ride. There was a line. Like it was long. Um, so it's about time to pay some bills. We stop, take about yep. a minute break, and uh, we'll be right back with Chuck Andrews. Aloha. I want to invite all of you to Talk Story with John Wahei every other Monday here at Think Tech Hawaii. And we have special guests like Professor Colin Moore from the University of Hawaii, who joins us from time to time to talk about the political happenings in this state. Please join us every other Monday. Aloha. Hi, I'm Bill Sharp, host of Asian Review here on Think Tech Hawaii. Join me every Monday afternoon from 5 to 5.30 Hawaii Standard Time for an insightful discussion of contemporary Asian affairs. There's so much to discuss, and the guests that we have are very, very well informed. Just think, we have the upcoming negotiation between uh, President Trump and Kim Jong-un, the possibility of Xi Jinping, the leader of China, remaining in power forever. We'll see you then. Hey, 
welcome back to the Think Tech Hawaii studios. This is Security Matters, and we're with Chuck Andrews today. We've been talking about GSX, going to be an amazing show. Get on out there to Vegas, check it out, whether you're an InfraGuard, whether you're an ISSA, or an ASIS member. It's obviously one of those places that you need to be this year, and you need to be there in a few weeks for sure. And there won't be a hurricane there, I promise. Although there's one here, no. there's going to be one on the East Coast. <laughs> there won't be one in Las Vegas, so come on out. Um, exactly. So let's, uh, you have um, some other work that you do that's, I think, really important. And um, you built a community of friendship, and it's called the Friends of Chuck. And I wanted to give you a shout out for that sharing work that you do. So Thanks, let's, let's kind of talk about, I don't know, I don't know sure. where it came from. I just know when you have one of those pins on, you're a lot more popular. So I always wear my <laughs> Friends of Chuck pin when I'm at the show. So talk about the, um, the, where that came from and what you're doing with it. It's amazing. One of the things I realized working in law enforcement at such a young age, when I said I started at the age of 13 in law enforcement, right? Um, was that relationships are key. And you mm. learn a lot about human psychology, human behavior, um, human beings, the way they act and do things and their culture, family. And you realize some things in life as a result and there's no replacement for friendships. And mm. for me, it's friendships over finances. And as a result, um, a friend of mine, basically it, it started this way and it's an interesting story. So um, I teach as an adjunct uh, graduate professor at my uh, alma mater, Sam Houston State University, actually because of its evolution of security in the computer science department. Ah, okay. So as a result, I had sent a friend of mine, uh, Frank, up there to teach in my stead, and he got up there and he just got his MBA from the University of Houston, just really excited you know, about this. He's given the presentations, students are a little rowdy, he goes, hey, hey, this is a Friends of uh, Frank event, right? And some students said, no, this is a Friends of Chuck. Where's, ah. where's Professor Andrews? Yeah, where's <laughs> we're all Friends of Chuck. And he comes back with this story, and we sit around and gather. Nice. Another friend of mine in Houston, who's a former law enforcement officer, chief security officer, retired, has this great uh, promotions company. son came up and said, look, this is a concept. We talked about it. And I said, look, there's nothing more powerful and helpful in life than relationships. Mm -hmm. So by forming this group, that's exactly what it does. Networking, business development, cutting edge security technology, helping someone find a job. And let me key in on that. I've mm. probably been fortunate enough to help maybe 100 people find key positions in security through relationships. I know their personality. I know the culture they came from. I know their education. Mm. And then when someone calls me, Chuck, who's the right guy for this job? And pairing those together, I've had 100% successful uh, placement, if you will. Wow. It's not a compensated role uh, at all. And I try to help people. From the person getting that job, what does that mean? What does that really mean to have a job? Mm -hmm. You can feed your family, right? You can feel productive, right? And contribute to sure, society, exactly. right? Have meaning in your life, right? Your own self worth and respect. It cannot be underestimated to help somebody find a job. Security and investigations vertical just happens to be my niche. I help people in other respects as well. So this half of C thing has grown to like 80,000 people <laughs> in 100 countries. Isn't that something? And it's just about friendships and relationships, right? And it's been very successful. Uh, we're going to see here coming up the launch of the FOC app. Okay. Literally, wow, nice. you'll be able to press a button and say, FOC now, what do you need? Wow. Right, and then we're going to develop into some actual services because people keep asking, um, Chuck, can you have help with media development or marketing or branding? Mm -hmm. Or okay. I don't understand. So it's going to evolve, and it's been a lot of fun. And you should do in life what's fun. In FOC, we have a mantra, right? Three things: dream big, know how to have fun, and get stuff done. It's just that simple. That's awesome, and it's great to share that with everybody. Now, you sh um, you know, Brian Tuscan from Microsoft is going to be in yeah. town tomorrow. He's yep. speaking, speaking at the Fusion Center. Love Brian. And he does that. He's very big at getting, especially law enforcement, which is where he came from, yep. and even some of his Hawaiian brothers. He came from here before he was at Redmond Police. Yep. Uh, he, I know, and, and also Paul from, uh, Matterhorn, Paul Bouchero is also big yep. on getting, he gets Marines into yep. our industry. So it's interesting, you know, because no one grows up thinking, I want to be in the security industry. No one really knows about our industry, right? And once you get in it, I think that helping thing that we do, um, you know, and it, there's a lot of ways to do that, but I think that that's what keeps people in our industry. Very much And we, so. we all sort of share that brotherhood. That's 
80,000 basically people to help other people so that people are working Very and productive. So. I love it. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. So that was coined by some students. That's <laughs> Very a, much so. Credit right. goes to uh, my students. To your students. They must Coming love you. Did they idea. all get a pin for that? Or, they I mean... all got a pin for that. They <laughs> love it. It's, uh, it's, and look, you got to have some humor in this life because it's a yes. different world, right? And, and there's some humor in, in, in all this as part of it. But um, I spend all day just managing inbound requests now from via LinkedIn or Facebook mm. and we have uh, Friends of Truck has those pages out there if you want to go be a part of that. That's awesome. Well, hopefully tomorrow you'll get to talk about that at the As Is sure. uh, chapter meeting here and get some more Hawaii friends. And I'm not sure how many you've got. <laughs> it's, such, it's just such a pleasure to get you out here in the island. So yeah. um, let's talk a little bit about what you've been doing since you've been here. Have you, um, you gotten to see the North Shore? South so we're Shore, on the West Side. Been? Okay. Uh, on the West Side uh, of the island enjoying uh, what trade runs we can. Mm -hmm. uh, look, this is your hottest month yeah right as part in september so we kind of knew that we had been here a few times before uh, okay. over our life um, maui and Kauai are our usual stops but you got to come here to understand the history right pearl harbor mm -hmm. uh, which uh, i'm going to have an opportunity to take my wife to and see a little bit of that history she's not seen that so we're just really having some great downtime and enjoying everything hawaii has to offer wow yeah it's um this is a place that, you know, there's so much military here and so much history. And we want to, yeah. uh, we do want to, while we're talking here, just remember uh, today is September 11th. So uh, 17 years ago, um, a lot of folks uh, made that ultimate sacrifice. And uh, interestingly, some of our uh, InfraGuard and FBI friends here were, were there at that time and uh, on Ground Zero. So I've seen some some pictures and heard some of their stories. They lost a lot of folks that day as well. So it's uh, it's been... Um, it's always something important to remember the work that we do. and then But it's good to have fun too doing it because you can get down in the the dirty parts of it and right. the hardness and the you know security it's interesting we talk a lot about how folks don't it's like kind of like insurance like they don't like to talk about security or security problems maybe and where we kind of right. live in them day in and day out um what do you what do you think where do you think that comes from that i don't know if, if the general public has a uh avoidance but they they just don't keep security top of mind to my way of thinking you know what, what's your experience with uh, you know that that idea do you think that's a you know, a, 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 a normal kind of thing as you travel the country and travel the world? Or? It's not as proactive as we would like it to be. <laughs> There's a good word. Right? So crime prevention. You had to kind of go back to that definition. Crime mm -hmm. prevention is the anticipation, recognition, and appraisal of a crime risk or risk and the initiation of some type of action to remove or reduce said risk. So as a company, the bottom line, right, is revenue. Right? There's P&L responsibilities. they mm -hmm. got a return on investor. If you're publicly traded, then your 10K is going to reflect right where that money is going, how it's spent. Mm -hmm. So bottom line, those board of directors have to make some hard decisions. Insurance is usually one of the biggest ways that they like to defray. But the problem is, is damage done. There's brands that have to be protected, people and assets that have to be protected. Mm -hmm. So let's take cyber as a good example. Mm -hmm. So really right now, it's like the World Wide Web wasn't designed for security yeah. in mind, right? So from that respect, you got to really operate in a zone of resilience. Mm -hmm. In other words, you need to be 60, 70% operational on a worst case scenario, mm -hmm. right? So they're only going to spend that amount of money, and you know, you're laughing because you know what I'm talking about, yeah. to reach that point, insurance covering the rest of it. But... Security is key. You can't replace a life. That's right. You, and, and certain assets cannot be replaced. Mm -hmm. It costs them time and money, and all that has to be evaluated. There's never enough attention. I know when I was a crime prevention officer, how did I sell for budgeting crime prevention, mm -hmm. right? How do you quantify that metric, right? There's actually a way to do it. And back in the day, I used the example of a DUI. Mm -hmm. What is the cost? So the average cost on a DUI is like $860,000 between attorneys and legal fees and medical fees, shutting down the highway, repair the highway, all these costs, you could actually quantify that. Okay. So if you could stop one DUI fatality, what's the value? $864,000. Wow. Okay. So I actually use those numbers to justify, like, what's the value of a burglary? And then there's soft dollars part, you know, the whole imaging. How well does the police department, how well did you do? Or as a security group, mm -hmm. how well did you do, mm -hmm. right? Because you want zero incidents. Yeah. 
right? And it's, uh, be, well, there's nothing going on in security. Well, we're preventing it. <laughs> yeah, you're going to you show that metric somehow, some way, right? But you have so to build your business case, and you have to pull that data to be successful and get it in front of the decision makers. That means dinner and golf with the board of directors, too. <laughs> I have definitely gotten that, that flat face before when I've, yeah. I've used the analogy that, you know, if we, if we go forward with this system and we get this implemented, the very best thing that can happen is nothing. Absolutely. And they all go, what? <laughs> now you have to paint the value of that. Exactly. Right? And that, that, that yeah. preventative value. And yeah. unfortunately, there's not a, there hasn't been a big folks. Tomorrow, I have a guest tomorrow coming on that's big in, uh, in, in risk analysis and threat assessment. So there's not a lot of that in Hawaii. He's actually ex-HPD as well, or former HPD. Um, so it'd be interesting to hear, you know, I want to see what he's doing in the community because sure. I often, you know, as you know, a lot of security folks like us get called upon as a reactive sort of thing. Something's Always. happened. 100% of the and time. And now we got to fix yeah. it, right? And I would really like Hawaii's thought process to get to a much more of a preventative sort of mindset and at least Absolutely. see these these ideas projected into the budgets and some, some fair analysis, whatever folks, right. you know, are kind of using out here. But there's just no one really doing that kind of stuff in Hawaii. So it's, it's a tough truth that yeah. an incident occurs. Take 9-11, what have we spent? A mm. trillion dollars yeah, on the like Department that. of Homeland Security in response, ex post facto. Under, so just about every scenario I've ever seen in a corporation where a major incident has occurred, a major breach, there's budget. Mm -hmm. But it's Always. after the fact, damage done. How do we get in front of it, right? Mm -hmm. We need to be able to communicate and being a member of ASIS International allows you, as a security director, security manager, chief security officer, to have knowledge of what's working with your colleagues. That's right. Right? Through networking. Literally, you could go to ASIS Connects, put the information up there, what's working for you? And you'll have Boom. 500 people sharing with you what worked to convince that board of directors, that group, that city council, if you will be for law enforcement, who are also members, right, sure. of ASIS International. How can you be, don't reinvent the world, oh, go out to ASIS and get this information as part of your membership. It's already of, there. It's already there. Awesome, thank you, Chuck. Sure. Folks, as is International, as is Connects, go out there, get this information if you need help, it's there, because security matters. Thank you. <laughs>